Hey guys, we're so glad you're here. We'll do our official welcomes in just a few minutes, but as you come in today, drop in the chat window what state you're coming from so we can get a feel of where you are and then we'll tell you where we are. So go ahead and do that. And um, I know that my moderators will help share where you're from. We are busy today. We have um, home from the home of Jimmy Carter. So someone coming in from Georgia, Addison, Illinois, San Jose, California, Richmond, Virginia, gifted students, shout out to them. Greensboro, North Carolina. It changed my Columbia, Tennessee, Arkansas. Um, in Pennsylvania, Agora Cyber Charter School, Atlanta, Georgia, Denver, Colorado, Lexington, South Carolina, uh, another one from Atlanta, Kankakee, Illinois, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, hello, Miss Trowbridge's class, Covington, Georgia, up. Oh. Alaska, that may be our furthest point at this time. Hello, Mrs. Neal's class. Well, we are certainly glad to see all of you joining us today. We're going to wait about one more minute before we make this official. But for those of you that are just coming in, I know Rodney's working on that home button. Um, go ahead and drop in where you're from so that Ms. Smitherman can give us some more idea of where we are. Right now we are spanning the country, which is really, really nice. Thank you for those early birds that are joining us today. Yes, let's see, we've got Livettown, Pennsylvania joining us. Lots of new people. Fort Mill, South Carolina is jumping in. Uh, there is Oak Grove Elementary in Atlanta. We've seen them before. I'm pretty sure that's where Ms. Brown is located. All right, well, we're still gonna let people come in, but we're gonna go ahead and get started because we have so much amazing things to say today. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to Crossing America live stream. Today, we are coming to you from knee deep water in Big Cypress National Preserve in Southern Florida. Now we're here today with our amazing Ranger friends, Ranger Lisa, who is over here. And then we have Ranger Jay, and we're going to let them introduce themselves a little bit more in just a moment. You're probably already recognizing Ranger Lisa. But we do, do want, we do want to do a few things for housekeeping. First of all, I'd like to recognize our moderators. Ms. Smitherman is coming to you from Tennessee and Mr. Krause from Greensboro, North Carolina. They are going to be our host and moderators for the entire year of live stream. So we're very excited to have them here. We're also going to let you know that they're sort of in charge there on the chat side. So we're going to be, they're going to be watching the chats. They're going to be stopping and asking us questions when we're ready for that. We're going to ask that you keep your audio muted until you're asked to unmute. That way you're going to be able to hear the beauty of the swamp that we're in today. So thank you to our helpers and then to all the teachers who took the time to show up today and to all the students from all over the country, we're glad you're here. We wanna thank the National Park Foundation for the collaboration on this project. This is year three with the National Park Foundation in Crossing America. And this is number one in our eight series of live streams this year. Ranger Lisa, we are so excited that we're starting out in the swamp, actually in the swamp here today. So would you just give a quick hey to our students out there? Hi, everybody. I'm Ranger Lisa. I've been working out here in the swamp a very long time, and I love it. Ranger Jay, would you give us a little, and we, we've seen you in a couple parks, so. You have. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Ranger Jay. I am a seasonal ranger here, so I'm only here in the winter time. This is my eighth season here but I've seen you in Acadia National Park also in the summertime. Absolutely. So we have these amazing, amazing subject, subject matter experts with us, better known as rangers. 
So let's go ahead and get started. Steve, if you'll run it back to the screen, there we go. So if you're sharing on social media today, we wanna make sure that you're using all of these hashtags. Our moderators will drop those into the uh, chat window now so you can have those to share out. We're also gonna give you opportunity to share when this is over. So today we are, as we said, in Big Cypress National Preserve. So today is Stories from the Swamp. Now we're gonna get a little swampy with you in a few minutes, but before we do, we wanna make sure that you have your paper and pencil or your journals that you printed offline because we want you, as every good student knows, to take some notes today. In fact, there might be even some prizes later on for those that do the best job with their notes. So we're gonna talk about geography, where exactly is Big Cypress National Preserve in the scheme of the United States. We're gonna talk about science. We're gonna have a few stories, and then we're gonna hit our STEM challenge. Before we get into that, we wanna remind you of a new thing we're starting this year, and it's called Word Cloud Poetry Slam. So as you listen today to the sounds, to the rangers, as you see things, as you feel things today, we want you to keep a running list of words. They could be adjectives, they could be animals, um, whatever you feel, see, or hear today, or whatever you think you may smell today coming from the swamp, keep that list and we'll give you an idea of what to do with that a little bit later. So Ranger Lisa and Ranger Jay, as we scroll through some of these pictures here, we see that there's a lot of stuff happening in this swamp. So we're going to let you actually talk to the kids now about what they think a swamp is. Are you okay with that? That's fine. Okay, yeah, let's I'm, hit it. I'd really like to know what picture you have in your mind when someone asks you about a swamp. What do you see in a swamp? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What might you hear out in the swamp? So just think about that for a minute. Get that picture in your head. And we're going to ask you to drop some of those ideas into the chat window. And we'll let Ms. Smitherman and Mr. Krause read some of those out. So maybe you even want to close your eyes for a moment yeah. and see in your brain, what do you think a swamp sounds like? What does it feel like we can tell you right now because we're in it as you can see we are splashing around in here but let's take that moment and just think and then once you have some good words we'll let um, our moderators share some of those all right got drip drip drop muddy, muddy, muddy. water squashy Rain raindrops <laughs> you guys Birds. They're helping me read the chat. <laughs> Lots of trees and wet. Those are all good words. Ooh, yeah. hear the frogs. Shakes, frogs. Bugs. Alligators. Snakes. Tall trees. Algae. Birds. Lots of birds. Frogs. Ripping. Mm -hmm. Well, those are great, great words. And now we're going to let you guys talk a little bit about this swamp and see if some of these answers were correct. I think there were a lot of correct answers. I do too. But, you know, a lot of people, Ranger Jay and I get, get told this all the time. I think the swamp must look like a place where Shrek lives. It must be dirty, smelly, slimy, dark, scary water. But you know what? This water, and let me get a little bit of it in this cup right here. It's crystal clear. Look at that. Would you have imagined when you were thinking about the swamp in your head, would you have thought that we'd be standing in water this clear? It's amazing. We can be all the way up to our name tags and still see our feet in this water. It's almost like stepping into a pool it is that clear. And it's almost that chilly. I mean, it's a hot day here in South Florida. It's going to be up to about 86 degrees, but this water feels so nice and cool on our legs. Yes, it does. Well, I heard them say something about birds. So let's take a look at a few birds we may see and then let you share a few other things. 
So let's go ahead to the screen and let's see if we can find some birds here at Big Cypress. And um, can you talk a little bit about the birds and what they're seeing on the screen right now? Well, you just saw two pink birds that were the roseate spoonbills. We're seeing a, a variety of egrets and herons, wood storks, all of these wading birds with the long legs. You can see how they wade out into the water there to catch their fish. And the longer legs you have, the deeper you can go and the bigger fish you can catch. Well, we also have songbirds. Oh yes, we've been hawks, hearing them. Bald eagles. There's a, a big, big variety. 275 different species live here in Big Cypress of, of just birds. I like that one, the wood stork. It has a beak that snaps shut in a 40th of a second. That's faster than you can blink your eyes. Oh, wow. What color are its toes? Pink. <laughs> Pink toes. And I believe you have something called a little blue heron here. We do. You've seen a lot a of those. Blue beak. Is that true? That's right. It has dark blue feathers and a powder blue beak with a black tip on the end. But its legs. Its legs are lime green. <laughs> now that is a colorful, great South Florida bird there. <laughs> I love that. So those are beautiful things. I know another question that I heard earlier um, when we were doing some pre-filming was people were wondering what it looked like under the water. Mm. They want to know if Dr. Drizzle is scared right now. So let me show you, we're going to switch cameras here and let you show you what it looks like under the water. Ooh. So can you talk about this too? I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to know everything, but this looks pretty safe here. That looks just like what we're standing in right now. Yep, there's small small plants that are growing under the water. Well, well, it's too bad we don't have smell of vision because we could smell that lemon bacopa. It's got a nice citrusy smell to it. But, oh, here's a piece of it right here. Maybe you want to pinch that and smell it. We'll let them oh. see that. In just oh, a minute. yeah. Yeah. So yep. we but see these roots there's under roots here. Under here because we have lots of trees. The cypress trees love water. They want to have wet feet for about nine months out of the year. That's what it's going to make them grow tall where most trees don't like all that water. Okay, well, they saw what was underneath. So let us let you show them some things that you just caught very recently. So let's come back there. Okay, oh, we have a lot of critters in here. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna hold this up if you wanna get those little gambusia fish. What are they called also, gambusia? They're also called mosquito fish because they eat mosquito larvae. That's why we are not getting bit up by mosquitoes out here in the swamp. They're a natural control of mosquitoes. What else? Let's, oh, we've got this snail right here. This, this little snail. Oh, he's really cool. I'm gonna give him to you for a minute. Okay. What kind uh, of snail is that? That's called an, oops, <laughs> a flying apple snail. That's an apple snail that slipped right out of my hand. Cut. Don't a worry, you know. Don't worry. He is perfectly safe and probably much happier in the water. That that was a big one, uh, about as big as they get. But this tiny little one is also an apple snail. Don't want to slip him out of my hand. That's a little one. Very cool. It's eaten by an endangered bird called the snail kite. This, isn't this unusual, too? It's got a double adaptation. Tell it us can... about it. It can breathe underwater because it has gills, but it can also climb under the land because it has lungs. Wow. So unlike most animals, you only have one or the other. This one has both. But it only does that to come up out of the water and lay its eggs. Okay. Then it goes quickly back in so it doesn't get snatched up by that apple snail. Here's another interesting shell I found, Ranger Jay. Let's see. That, you know, that is, that's pretty shiny. It is shiny. Must mm. be part of its name. Oh, the shiny shell muscle it's hard Tiny to say shell muscle a yeah, little good. bit of an alliteration yeah. there it's yeah kind of difficult to say look at the colors inside that is gorgeous and what eats these i think otters would eat them yeah, we have maybe river otters. even baby gators or raccoons yeah. Yep. yeah well speaking of gators mm -hmm. which i think everyone sort of knows about i wondered if you guys could share with us the evidence of these gators. Now we never know. There may be one that comes up around my legs pretty soon, <laughs> but we do have some evidence oh, of some okay, gators. So let's this one. Let's oh, keep going. On the far side. Oh. 
So we do have some evidence that's kind of gross, which uh, is perfectly great for it, October 31st. It kind of makes it look like I sneezed or something. And Oh, what is that, Ranger uh, Jay? This really isn't from a gator. This is called paraphyton, and it's a blue-green algae, and it's got little critters living in it. You can kind of see the green color, maybe. That's uh, chlorophyll. And it is a building block here for Big Cypress National Preserve. This is the base of the food chain. Okay. And this is also what creates soil because when this dries out, it starts to break down and it makes the soil in our prairie called marl. But look at all the water this holds. Wow, it's like a sponge. Yep. So it, it kind holds. of looked like a soggy Cheeto there for a minute. Yeah. But now, what did you guys call it earlier that made me uh, kind of gag a little bit? We said it was alligator snot. Alligator snot. So yeah. there you go, boys and girls. <laughs> Not all snot is bad. This snot is actually good. Do we have any other um, evidence well, of alligators here? You know, Dr. Drizzle, you never know when something like this might just swim up to you. Oh, now tell us about that. Is that an alligator or a crocodile? This is an alligator. How do we know that, Jay? Well, one way is by its snout. Alligators have a U-shaped snout. Crocodiles have a V-shaped snout. Right. Another is pretty much where it lives down here in yep. this environment. Alligators like fresh water. The crocodiles, they like what's called brackish water. It's a mixture of fresh and salt together. Uh, the shape of the head is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. The coloration, uh, alligators are darker in color. The uh, crocodiles are more of a grayish tan color. But this one kind of has stripes. It does. Doesn't it kind of look like camouflage? It does. And that's what it is, is camouflage. Exactly. This is a young alligator. It's only a couple years old. That's Fred. So we're going to show you something else, but well, while we are, kids, why don't you drop in the chat window if you've ever seen an alligator before? Now, not on TV, but actually been up close to one because we're going to take you up close now to an alligator relic. And what is this? This, this is the skin of an alligator. Of a full-grown so, alligator. Yeah, a full-grown alligator. And you so, see it's lost its stripes, hasn't it? Yep, no stripes on it. But you can see the little bumps on it. We'll talk about those later. You can see it's got claws. It helps it dig in the in the soil. So, um, moderators, do we have anybody that's ever seen an alligator before? Did anything come into the chat window? Yes, a... several of them. One classroom had 15 that had seen an alligator. Uh, oh. One had about 25. Um, Another classroom had two, so so they're out there. People have seen them. Excellent. Well, now there's not just alligators here, correct? There are other life there, forms here. There are. There's people think the swamp doesn't have very much for life forms, but there's lots and lots of life forms that live here. And we happen to bring a skull today of a carnivore and of an omnivore. So Lisa's getting those. So Lisa, what do you have there with you? Well, this is a skull of one of our largest animals found in the swamp. This is kind of rounded and it has these big teeth, big fangs up in the front or canines. So we know it must grab animals and rip apart meat. It's a carnivore. And we also know that because of these sharp back teeth, like our molars are not real sharp, these these teeth are shaped specifically to come together like scissors and tear meat. This is our most endangered species in the swamp. This is the Florida panther. It's not a panther. It's just a subspecies of a cougar or a mountain lion. It's brown, kind of the color of a deer. And we have very few of these. So, as I said, our most endangered species 150 to 250 of these left, but Big Cypress is a perfect home for these creatures. Yep. What do you have? So that's a carnivore, right? That's a carnivore. That's, carnivore. that's going to eat meat. Now, what do you have? Now, I have something that I know some of your students have seen because the ones in Pennsylvania, I'm pretty sure have seen this before. And it's kind of hard to tell just by looking at its head. But if we open up the jaw, we can see that it does have fangs, kind of like we have little fangs. 
but it's got flat molars. So we know that it's an omnivore. It eats meat and plant-based. And this is a Florida black bear. Mm -hmm. There are bears in Florida? There are lots of bears in Florida. We have over 4,000 bears in Florida. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little different than the bears you might find in Alaska, where some of our students are from, or from Pennsylvania. But it is a, a black bear. It does go into hibernation in the wintertime, even though it's kind of warm down here. Uh, what does it mostly eat, though? Yeah, I know a so, lot of people think they eat a lot of meat or something else, but tell them what yeah, they mostly so eat. Because of those flat teeth in the back, those molars, we know that it eats plant material. Actually, 80% of its diet is based off of plants. So it might eat flower bulbs or flowers themselves, grass shoots, berries, nuts. Which you definitely can find where we are. That's right. Now, I believe you have one more. We do. You got that? I got it. Okay. There's a lot of juggling going on out here in the swamp. <laughs> But we have one I think is going to get you really excited about also. Kind of gives you a perspective on how big these alligators are. So oh, my tell us. Look at this. This is an alligator skull. Remember the U-shape. Yep, that U-shaped nose. And look how big it is. And I'm going to have to have you help me hold okay. this, Ranger Jay, because he is I can pretty hold heavy. It. And that's just the head. That's just the head. So one of the ways you can maybe tell the estimated length of an alligator by not getting too close, because you never want to do that, is guess about how many inches it is from the eyes to the nostrils here. How many inches do you think that is, Dr. Drizzle? I think that's about a foot. About a foot. So we can say that this was about a 12-foot alligator. So that's there's 12 alligator. inches in a foot. Right. So just convert that to... Um, how many feet it is in the whole length all the way to the tip of its tail would be about 12 feet. Big alligator. What do alligators eat? Anything they want to. <laughs> what do they mostly eat? They eat fish and fish. turtles yep. and mammals that get down by the water's edge. Um, yeah, that's about what they eat. Yeah. But now we don't feed those correctly as humans. No. We're not supposed to feed those. No, you know, like all animals, they have a natural fear of people. But if you feed any wildlife, especially these gators, they'll lose that natural fear. They may come closer and closer and think that your foot is a snack. So you never want to feed them and let them lose their natural fear. Out here in the swamp, they're not fed, so they just want to hide from us. Yeah, so I'm not too worried that they're running around my feet right nope. now. No. Yeah. Um, well, this is really interesting, and you guys are such great experts, but our kids are also experts at Let's things. Let's see what they say. So, kids, we're going to go now to our STEM challenge, our engineering design challenge, and we're going to ask you to share some of your ideas with us. So, Steve, if you can make that come up. Okay, I am way behind here, so let's try something different. Can you uh, come back to me for just a moment? And I'm going to go ahead until I get to the STEM challenge. Can you tell me if I'm there? All right. So we're going to go to our STEM challenge now. We're going to look at UN Global Goal number 11. Now, we know that a lot of you have been working on this idea of helping Ranger Lisa and Ranger Jay and the other rangers here at Big Cypress open to sustain restore, rehabilitate, and maybe even rebuild some of the trail system here. Now, what you can't see right now is behind the cameras, we have this large, large vehicle, very high up on wheels called a swamp buggy. And the swamp buggy is what is allowed out here, along with something called a UTV. Is that correct? UTVs are also allowed when they're if they have a permit if they have a permit well we don't want them out here where we are right now because they would take out some of this habitat but we have some trails and some roads built and we want you guys to think about how you can create new trails new ways for people to get around in big cypress national preserve all people of all abilities. So this is that one time now where we want you to share your story. I know that this is one of the times that Ranger Lisa and Jay have been really excited about to hear your ideas. So 
Uh, Ms. Smitherman and Mr. Krause, I'm going to actually turn it over to you right now. We'll go live on the camera. And I want you to share with us um, any ideas that your, the students have come up with. So take it away. All right. First up, we have... First up, we have Woodard Elementary. So why don't you guys tell us what you got? Um, this is our trail restoration and preservation plan. Our idea is to dig out the trail and form a new shape chain. We will build a foundation of limestone, rocks, and concrete. Then we will return the original soil that was dug up back on top. The U shape will keep the soil from washing out. By returning the soil back on top, it will give a new natural look. All right. Thank you, guys. All so right. I, I think I heard that they were going to um, start with limestone. And tell yes. us, you like that idea? I do like that idea because that's exactly what we have beneath our feet and down underground here, down into the aquifer, is limestone bedrock. So that would match perfectly with what's already naturally found here. Nice. Thank you, Ms. Smitherman. Let's do another one. Okay, I'm waiting for someone else to raise their hand. Mr. Krause, I know you've got some good, let's see. Um, We've got uh, from Miss Trowbridge's third graders. They've been working on sketches this morning. They've got platforms for the trails. They've even designed steps and ramps at different places so that people can get into the water. That's nice. Nice. Wonderful. Uh, teachers, if you could use your emoji on the screen to raise your hand, that would be a little easier for us to see. I think I see one. Um, it just says Slins on the screen. If that is you, if you want to unmute and share, we'd love to hear your idea. You need to unmute. Please. There you go. Yeah. Hi. We, we weren't totally ready, but there's going to be. Come on, bring it over here. Stop eating. <laughs> Because we're third graders, we've been working with about four days. So right here, now you got to be on the camera. So show it on the camera. What's your idea here? So our idea was like we wanted to make like a clear bridge so that you can see like when you look on the bottom, you can like see all the water and all the animals that are on it. Anything else you guys want to add? And we also made a door. We also made a door, so like a tiny door, so you can open it. So you can see, like right here, the animals and the other and the other things. So a clear walkway they could look underneath and see the swamp. I oh, love cool. that. Who yeah. needs Disney World or Sea World? Big Cypress is going to have their own great tunnels, glass tunnels. Excellent idea. Thank you for sharing that. All right, Ms. Trowbridge's class, you are up. I see your hand raised. Give me one second. I highlighted them, and so I'm trying to unhighlight them and get coverages up there. There you go. All right, go ahead. Okay, so what we did is where, where we, made a, we made a bridge. Wait, what's it called? Pebbles. 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 Then we made like the swamp. So then we made a bridge where people could walk over it. I'm yeah, not nice. But, now, what material were you thinking about using? Wood and pebbles. Wood. Very sustainable material, and it won't look out of place, which is really nice. I like that. Thanks, Thanks for sharing. You. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Miss Lynch, you say you had a couple of more ideas you wanted to share? So why don't you share yours, Noah? Um, Tell them what, what your bridge is made of. Our bridge is made out of wood. The other day it just fell down, so we did this. And we put okay. Cypress Trail on the sun. And what's holding up the wood? The clay. clay. So like some kind of clay or concrete. OK. And then we have another one, if that's OK. It, absolutely. All right, what's your team's idea, Claire? It's like a nighttime park, and we made it deeper so they can look 
down and feel the nature. And um, we put a whole bunch of flowers down to show that the, like, like a bush is around the flowers and it's nighttime. Thank you. And then one more. Sorry. Come on over, Nora. So most of our ideas were see-through, so you could look down into the swamp as you walk over. And then this is a different idea. Come on over. It's okay, Nora. <laughs> All right. Do you want to share what it is? Okay. So, Nile, say it. That he's kind of quiet. So the idea is a what, Nile? The three trees and bushes with a floating a floating walkway on top of the swamp. Nice. Yeah, that's I, I like that. It's and I, I like that that would give them like a, a sensory feeling mm -hmm. that they feel like they're actually in the swamp, oh. even though they're not. Thanks for sharing that. Um, do we, we have time for a few more, Miss Smitherman? Um, I think Mr. Krause's class is up to bring us to a close. Guys, we're going to defer to Miss Allen. Miss Allen or Taylor Allen, Miss Allen, are you there? Miss Allen, you're muted. Could you unmute yourself? Do we have them? No, she says her audio isn't working. Okay, well, if they want to drop the idea into the chat window, you can share. So, Mr. Krause, did you have something for us? Not this time, but Miss Barton says that we think the clear bridge would be neat so that there would be more possibilities to see the animals and the plants underneath them. That is great. Well, here's the, here's the thing, kids. If you don't have your ideas today, we're going to show you where you can share those. So, if we can go to the uh, computer for just a moment. And we're going to ask that you share your ideas on FLIP. So if my moderators can drop that FLIP code into the chat window, this code is going to give you about two minutes where you can um, go, come on video and share your design. We're going to keep it open for about two weeks, kids, um, because we want to start thinking about these ideas and start getting them into place if they're feasible here at the park. So go to this flip grid. And again, your moderators are dropping that into the chat window. And uh, teachers, that's going to open um, just with that flip grid. You're not going to have to have any permissions for that once it opens. Now, if designing is not something you're great at, we're going to give you another chance to share. And that's going to be in our this year's one time only poetry slam. So remember at the beginning of our video, we talked about making a list of words that you thought about, that you felt, that you saw, that you heard. Well, now we're going to ask you to turn that into some poetry. So up on the screen, you're going to see a list of a few types of poetry that I have put up there, a few types of poems. You may use any of the ideas on this list, or you may create your completely new idea of what poems could look like and remember all songs are poems so if you want to create a song about what you learned today teachers this is another flip grid code so when the moderators drop this into the chat window just keep those separately the first one is for the trail restoration challenge and then this one is for any of your students who want to write a poem to share with the park. And you never know, it could end up on their social media because 
sometimes rangers aren't very creative and they need some light in their life and some poetry and some music. Now, Miss Lisa, I didn't mean that you weren't. I saw you dancing a little bit earlier um, today, but these poems might be interesting for them. So that's going to be something that you can share. Now, we're coming to one of my other favorite parts of this, a QA. and a okay. So kids, any question that you have about big cypress, about alligators, about alligator snot, bears, Florida pipe, uh, Florida panthers, anything that you're thinking about, this is your time to ask that question. If your audio is not working and you want to drop it into the chat window, our moderators will share it out. But you can also come right up to the camera and ask them a question about anything about this park. So I'm turning it back over to our co-host and let's see if anybody has a question. Let's see if we can stump the ranger today. Are you, are you ready? I'm ready. Ready. You I've ready? Lots of questions they've been dropping in the chat all morning long. So here you go. Exactly why is the water clear? Well, that's a really good question. Can I answer this you one? You can. I love this question because a lot of people don't realize that our water here is moving. If you can see it beneath our feet, it's very hard to tell it's moving, but it's moving to the south and it's going through this huge, big national preserve, 729,000 acres of wetland that's so important and it acts like a big strainer or kind of like a coffee filter. As that water flows to the south through this big wetland, it's filtered and strained and it clears out all the muddled up dirt and any other debris and it becomes crystal clear on its journey to the south. That's pretty important for all the fish and other things that live in it. So glad you knew that one. So they're not <laughs> stumped yet. Uh, yeah. What else do you have? Um, are there crabs there? Ooh. Are there crabs? Yes, there are crabs. They live in the mangrove estuary, which is that area where the fresh water and the salt water are going to shake hands. And we get that brackish water. And we have uh, stone crab. We do. We have several kinds of crabs, but that's the big that's one the right one now eat. that we like to eat. <laughs> that's right. Yep. That's kind of to the south of us where all this water, fresh water, this is all fresh rainwater, is flowing south to meet the estuary, to meet that salt water of the Gulf of Mexico. Ranger Jay, what was that water called when it mixes? When it mixes, it's called brackish. Brackish water. Brackish. Great Ms. question. Class, will you come off mute and ask your question? And Brookwood Elementary, you're up next. So Mrs. Pitts, what you got? <laughs> Hi there. Tylen, did you want to ask your question? What is the, what is the biggest alligator you, they, you have at the, in the swamp? He wants and to you, know what the largest alligator is that you have found there in the swamp, what the size and weight was. Ooh. I know I've seen one that's about 14 feet long. That's the biggest one I've seen in the swamp, but I don't get to all parts of this huge big area. So there could be bigger ones. I can only, I can't even guess how, how much that would have weighed. I didn't want to get close enough to find out. <laughs> and if, if it's the one I'm thinking about, he's pretty chunky looking. He is. When he lays down, he kind of spreads out and they call him. Big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. All right, Brookwood Elementary, will you unmute and ask your question? Hello, happy Halloween. Hi. Go ahead, look in the camera right here. How long does it take for the trees to get very tall? Can you repeat that for us? Nice and loud. How long does it take for the trees to get really tall? Oh, so how long are these, how, how many years old are these trees? Well, these big, tall cypress trees behind us, probably are only about 70 or 80 years old. But years ago, back in the 30s and 40s, they actually cut down the big old growth trees that were as big as this area where we're standing. And those might have been 500 to 800 years old to get that tall. These are pretty young behind us here. 
All right. Um, Ms. Mahone's class, do you have a question? Hi, can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry, she's coming. Casey, oh. <laughs> I asked her a question about Does the swamp like a, a bayou? Is a swamp like a bayou? Ooh. Oh. It's what very a, similar, isn't it? It is very similar. Yeah, I. My, I've only been in the bayou once, but I didn't find the clear water like we have here. Maybe you can tell us if it's clear in the bayou. But also in the bayou, you see a lot of the Spanish moss hanging from the trees. And um, I, I'm not sure, but I maybe in the bayou, it's standing still. All right, Mr. Krause, and then Miss Neal, you're up next. All right. Maybe do some comparison between the bayou and the swamp and then get back with us. And if you turn it into a poem, that would be even better. Great question. Almost stumped them there. Did you see the little hesitation? I was so excited. I feel like I feel like you were pretty good on the stumping there. That's right. Getting close. I, I was starting to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How strong is an alligator's bite? How hard do alligators bite? Yes, how strong? How strong is how an alligator's strong? Let me see. Oh, no, <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> so when an alligator closes its jaws, if we measure the pressure on pounds per square inch, 3,000 pounds per square inch. So that'd be like balancing a Volkswagen on a postage stamp. Wow. Ow. Yeah, they have a very strong bite. It crushes bones, it crushes turtle shells. Another reason to leave them alone. Let yep. them live and be happy doing what they're doing, right? That's, That's right. right. We, oh. we practice rule of thumb. If you put your arm out in front of you, put your thumb in the air, close one eye, look at the animal. If it sticks out either side or over the top, you're too close. Oh. And that is with anything, Any bear, moose. Yep. Yeah. That's just a good rule of thumb. Yeah. Great question. All right. Do we have one more, Ms. Smitherman? Mrs. Neal coming in from Alaska has a question. Good. Come on, you gotta come up. How long do alligators live? He wants to know how long do alligators live? Oh, their lifespan. Well, I know that in captivity, if you saw one in a zoo or at bush gardens like we have down here in Florida, they've had one up there that they think is about 50 years old. But out in the wild, where they have predators to contend with when they're small, especially, um, and diseases and, and maybe scarcity of food, they can't live that long. I'm not sure if they know. I have, I have not heard a number on that. Does that count as a stump? I think Marsh. that Alaska has almost <laughs> stumped. So Georgia and Alaska, you are tied for this stump question of the day. So excellent job. Um, co-host that we can do maybe one more um, we had a question about if there are turtles in the swamp oh great question we have lots of turtles here mm -hmm. we have the red-bellied slider and we have some soft shell turtles and snapping turtles 12 or 15 varieties of turtles mm -hmm, i'd say yeah so there's lots of turtles here well, as we can tell, there is a lot going on in this swamp. So the stories that you've heard about the swamp being a wasteland or scary or creepy or murky, those aren't really true. There are so many beautiful things living in the swamp. Just around us today, we have had multiple birds that have flown around our head. Yesterday, we saw a really cute animal called a fox. Fox. The big fox. cypress fox squirrel. And we tried to find that this summer and couldn't find it, but they were out yesterday. That's right. They live here in the cypress. Well, kids, we are so excited that you have taken this time. Oh, we have one waving goodbye to us. Taking this time to share your ideas, 
to learn from the Rangers. We're going to ask that all of the things that you've learned today that you sh somehow share with us through the trail restoration challenge on flip or the poetry slam because the more you know the more your brain grows and someday you too could be standing in this swamp not wearing an orange shirt but actually wearing a flat hat as a park ranger a special thank you to miss smitherman and mr kraus for being our co-host today to all of the students who are out there Teachers, if you have your phones with you, I'm going to pull up a slide and I'm going to ask that you take a picture of this QR code. We would like to know how we're doing. So let me get there. Oh, before we do that, though, take a look at this map, because in the last two and a half, two years and one month, these are all the places we have been with Crossing America. If you can see the yellow, those are the parks we have visited. The blue, the uh, red are the schools we have visited. And today we just added a blue star to Big Cypress National Preserve. So thank you so much to the National Park Foundation for your help. Here is the QR code if you wanna grab. We'll also send this in an email if you can't grab that QR code. But we wanna know where you wanna see us go next. And speaking of next, we're going to be hanging out with Ranger Kate. So if you'll come back to me for just a moment, we're going to be hanging out with Ranger Kate from Acadia National Park next week on Thursday at 1 p.m. Easter time. Now, you're excited about that, Ranger Jay, because that's where you spent some time. Yes, and I know Ranger Kate and Ranger Alexa, who's going to be with you. Excellent. And we're going to see crabs, especially that green European crab oh, that's yeah. so invasive. But we're going to see starfish and periwinkles and just a lot of great things next week at Acadia National Park live stream. So on behalf of the National Park Foundation, Expeditions and Education, this is Dr. Drizzle, Ranger Jay, Ranger Lisa, and all the diverse, the diversity of Big Cypress Park. And we are out of here. We're going to let you keep your cameras on for just a moment and we'll just sort of see everybody. So if we can unpin and we'll just sort of see all the faces, kids, will you please wave at us so we can see you? Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on Crossing America live stream. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Look at my god.